Hi pet lovers, thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Today's episode is going to be discussion on how to choose shampoo like a pro. So a few weeks ago we released an episode on how to use shampoo like a pro. So if you are interested in the proper handling and storage of shampoo, also how to mix them properly, we discussed dilution rates, make sure to check up on how to use shampoo like a pro on Gina's Grooming Channel. So we're going to go ahead and break this discussion into three main sections. Now the first section is going to be science. The science behind shampoo. Do not run away. We're going to keep it really high level. Uh, so don't be afraid, but we definitely need to discuss how shampoo works to really understand what it does. And then we're going to talk about some common categories that professionals use when dealing with shampoo. There is usually not one silver bullet, one shampoo that's going to work for all of our clientele. So I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the common categories that you'll see in a professional grooming salon. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish with differentiators. So things that set a certain brand apart, um, some of the differentiators that groomers go through to decide which shampoo works best for them because it is a personal decision. And there are tons of amazing shampoos out there. Uh, we have to look at some traits that really work for us as individuals when making those choices. So we're going to go through that list. Now before we jump in, I'm going to go ahead and address two issues that come up uh, pretty commonly surrounding shampoo in the professional pet grooming industry. The first one is, should we shampoo pets at all? Uh, why don't we net let their natural oils just do their thing? Uh, pets should be able to take care of themselves. Now there are a lot of health and wellness um, benefits to keeping your pets clean, uh, but I also want to mention that we don't forget that these are our house buddies. These are our family, right? So these pets, they sometimes get on our couches, they sometimes sleep on our beds. So we want to make sure that they stay clean so that we keep cuddling them. We give them a lot of love and affection, a lot of love and attention because they smell great. We don't mind them up by our faces. So definitely know that there are a lot of benefits to keeping your pet clean, uh, but know it's also because it brings more love into the world for the pet and for the owners. The other issue that comes up very often uh, is the question of, can I use human grade shampoo on my pet? Okay, so I have read a few articles um, and tests that have been done that really say that there's no difference. They're not going to do any harm. And I will say that I've seen some home groomers who use human grade shampoo and they wash their pets and their pet skin is healthy and their coat is very nice, uh, moisturized. So I definitely have seen it not harm uh, pets. But I will tell you this, as a pet professional, I'm going to use professional uh, grade pet shampoo on pets because I, as a professional, I have a lot of liability. I have to make sure that I follow all the rules. So for my clientele, I'm not going to take a chance and wash them with human grade shampoo because humans actually have more acid on their skin. They have a higher acidity uh, rate, right? A different pH balance than dogs. Dogs are more alkaline. So for that reason, I don't take a chance. I make sure that all of my clients are bathed with professional pet shampoo that is pet grade only. Okay, so let's jump into the science. Again, we're going to keep this really basic uh, for all of you nerds out there. If you guys want to uh, read more about how shampoo works on a molecular level, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some links down in the description below. But for our discussion today, we're going to keep it really high level and explain how shampoos work. Okay, the first thing we have to remember is that oil and water do not mix. So if this is an oil molecule, right, and this is a water molecule, they don't mix. Now oils are not inherently bad. In fact, oils are wonderful. So oils are naturally produced on a dog's skin, right? There's sebum, right? And then you also have some environmental oils that can come into play. But this oil nourishes the skin and the coat. So very important that this oil is there. But what happens with oil, right, is that dirt particles, dust particles can get stuck on it. And that's when you start getting a smelly dog. It's not the inherent oil on the dog's coat, right? But it's all that dirt and dust and environmental factors that are getting stuck on the oil, right, that now cause the dog to be dirty. So remember that oil and water do not mix, okay? So we've got all of this dust and dirt collecting on this oil particle, but with water, we can't go ahead and wash that out. So what we need to do is introduce detergents. So shampoo in its essence is a detergent. So let's talk about what a detergent is. 
Okay, so in order for oil and water to work better together, we need to lower the surface tension of this water molecule. And that's what a surfactant will do. It will go ahead, lower the surface tension of this water molecule so that it can go ahead, grab the oil molecule, and when you rinse it off with water, it's gonna go ahead, rinse, right, all that oil with all that dirt and grime on that oil particle off. So great, so that's our detergents, that's our surfactants, but the problem is, is that the surfactant, the detergent, even though it's washing away all that oil, it's gonna be washing away oil that is beneficial to the dog, so we can't strip the pets of all of that natural oil, even though there's dirt on it, right? We wanna go ahead and clean that dog or that pet, but we wanna go ahead and restore that coat with a few things. So a lot of the main uh, shampoo manufacturers are gonna go ahead and put in some uh, fatty acids to restore the coat after we have that surfactant detergent stripping away that oil, right? So you'll see also botanicals. You will go ahead and see some essential oils um, included as part of the uh, ingredients in a good shampoo, right? So it's kind of like a two punch kind of a thing. So it's gonna remove the dirt, right? With the oil, with the surfactant detergent, right? And then it's gonna replenish it with good botanicals, right? And fatty acids and um, different types of essential oils. So an important thing to note about surfactants, um, they are not all created equally. Some surfactants uh, are much more harsh to a skin of a dog or to a skin of a human. Uh, so be aware of that. There are more gentle surfactants out there um, that don't strip the coat as much. So for an example, you'll see something in a lot of detergents called sodium laurel sulfate. Um, and I kind of pronounce that laurel so that you know that there is a difference. So the laurel sulfate is what you'll actually see in a lot of industrial detergents. You won't see that normally and you shouldn't in dog shampoos. But there are surfactants that are a little more gentle uh, to the skin and not as irritating. So you'll see a lot of different surfactants such as sodium laureth. Uh, sulfate uh, that's a lot gentler um, and then you also have a lot of plant uh, derived surfactants that are very gentle to the skin and coat so be aware that not all surfactants are created equal and some surfactants can actually be irritating the, to the skin so make sure that you use a very gentle surfactant when choosing your shampoo and I will say that all of the top players out there that are manufacturing shampoos are usually using very very gentle surfactants um, but go ahead check those ingredients make sure uh, that you know that you're using a very gentle product and let's not forget now that we've used all our shampoo even if it has wonderful botanicals infusing the coat back with some moisture and hydration right um, we still want to go ahead and seal with a conditioner conditioners come in different types so we have our cream rinses we have our spray leave-ons um, conditioners so I'm gonna talk about that at the end of the video kind of have a little bit of a word about conditioners so I just want to mention that after you shampoo you want to follow up with a quality conditioner so now that we kind of know the science, high level, it's not too scary, I hope, uh, let's go ahead and jump in the, the, to the types of categories that groomers usually have in a professional environment. We do not have one shampoo that solves all of our client issues, right? So depending on what is going on with our little clients, we may choose a certain type of shampoo. So let's go through those categories that you'll commonly see in a professional pet grooming salon. Professional pet groomers will usually have an all-purpose shampoo. Um, so something that they will use for about 70% of their dogs. Um, now usually it's highly dilutable, very gentle, but it's a deep cleaning. I choose the deep clean from EnviroGroom. I'll talk a little bit about my choices at the end of the video, um, but just know that usually groomers will start out having some type of an all-purpose shampoo that they use as a general rule. And then we kind of go into our specialties, but they're all important to have. We go into our hypoallergenic shampoo. So we need to have a hypoallergenic shampoo for dogs that are super sensitive, uh, that have allergy issues uh, or have itchies issues uh, with shampoo. So make sure that you know that most professional pet groomers are gonna add a hypoallergenic shampoo to their whole repertoire. Going on, we also have our color enhancing shampoos. Uh, so this is a brightening shampoo. This is face off from Kelco. Um, this is what I use on my white dogs to brighten them. Um, it's a very healthy uh, extract of blueberry that whitens them. But just want you to know that there are color enhancing shampoos. There are uh, shampoos for red dogs. There are shampoos for black dogs. Usually the color enhancing for white works great with the black dogs. But we want to make sure to know to have as again part of our little uh, repertoire here is that we have a color enhancing or a brightening shampoo. 
Next on our list is we have a uh, de-shedding shampoo. So for our double coated breeds that come in with a lot of undercoat, we want to have a shampoo that will help loosen up that undercoat. Uh, Easy Groom Filthy Beast is a great one. Um, we also have our Ferminator products that work great for loosening that undercoat. But I'll tell you that an undercoat shampoo and solution does wonders to speed up the process of de-shedding. So if you're a professional groomer, you definitely want to include a de-shedding shampoo into your family of shampoos. Next, what we'll also have is an offering uh, for a fragrance shampoo or a cologne shampoo. Um, now, I've always chosen the Esprit Rainforest uh, shampoo because of its smell. So if someone comes, a client comes and says, you know, Fluffy needs to smell extra, extra good today. Uh, I usually have a cologne shampoo on hand uh, to really enhance that fragrance if that's important to a client. And then, of course, we have our therapeutics. Uh, so I always keep some Zymox and some uh, universal medicated shampoo from Vitoquinol on hand. Uh, this is for dogs that are itching or are flaky. They have dandruff. So I have a therapeutic medicated line of shampoos that I use to address simple skin issues. So these are kind of the basics. Just know that in addition to all these, there are tons and tons of amazing shampoo out there. There are some that have glitter in them. There are some that really focus on, you know, maybe fast drying a dog, uh, different types of uh, fragrances. There's so many different choices. Uh, so we are gonna go into kind of how uh, groomers make decisions and what they're gonna look at when going ahead and choosing their professional shampoo. So obviously, uh, the first thing that we're going to be looking at uh, with the shampoo when we're evaluating it is going to be the efficacy, right? The results. Um, so we want to make sure that a shampoo is working well. What I've always done when I introduce a new shampoo into a salon that I'm managing or I own is I use my dogs as guinea pigs, but I make wise decisions. I make sure that I choose a shampoo that has a recognized brand, and I'll talk about brands at the end of this list, um, but make sure that, of course, when I'm evaluating a pet shampoo it's something that has already been out in the field and tested and then I test it on my pets and the pets of the folks in my employ and then if it looks good and if it really uh, has great results we're gonna go ahead and then roll it out to our client base another differentiator that may be important uh, to look at and I it's definitely important to me is the types of ingredients that they're using. It makes me happy that Esprit is using um, organic aloe vera. Same with the EnviroGroom products, they're using organic products, um, so, and that's certified. That makes me happy. So the quality of the ingredients that are used in the shampoo is definitely one of the things that I look at uh, when selecting shampoos, and definitely something that I urge that you look at as well. Uh, now the third uh, item and the differentiator that I kind of want to talk about is important which is kind of the tactile feel. Different shampoos feel a little differently um, so I am not a big foam person. I'm also not a person who likes no foam. I do like a little bit of suds so I choose a shampoo that have a tendency to be kind of in the medium right there uh, so that is going to be up to you. Uh, just know that um, in order for a shampoo to clean you don't need to have suds that's an actual additive um, so just be aware of that but again it's kind of like a tactile feel to you you're gonna be washing pets day in day out as a professional so make sure that you use a shampoo that feels right to you um, a fourth common differentiator and this is something that I look at um, is uh, the effect that the shampoo and the products that you're, you're using have on your skin. Uh, so if you start seeing that your hands are getting really dry as you're using a new shampoo, uh, you want to make note of that. That uh, may be because it's a drying shampoo and that's going to have the same effect possibly on the pets in your care. So make sure you notice how the shampoos that you're choosing are affecting your skin and that's going to give you a really good indicator of how it's going to affect the pets in your care. Now the fifth thing that I look at, so if all those boxes have been checked, right, and everything is working great, I look at the cost. Uh, as a professional, that definitely makes a difference. So if I have a high dilution rate from a product um, that I really like, and I'm comparing it to a product that has a low dilution rate, and I know that the product with a high dilution rate is gonna give me the same results for a lower price point, I'm gonna go obviously and choose that one. Uh, so be aware and look at that, and make sure that you know that with professional grooming, cost does uh, get included into that, and Make that as part of a factor when you're choosing your shampoo. 
Now, the sixth thing that I look at, it's not on my most important list, although I will say if there is a bad fragrance that goes kind of on the top of my list, I'm not going to go ahead and wash a dog in a horrible smelling shampoo. But uh, I will add fragrance as part of my list. Um, I fall in love with certain scents uh, like this Zymox, my goodness. I love the smell of the leave-on conditioner. Uh, so just know that I incorporate fragrance as part of um, my factors when I'm choosing shampoo. In fact, uh, this hypoactive shampoo has a little bit of a grapefruit, very, very light grapefruit scent. I absolutely love it and my clients love it. So fragrance definitely has come into play when I've used my shampoos. Plus it, it makes it a more pleasant environment when I'm smelling the things that I personally like to smell. So make sure that you consider fragrance when you're choosing your shampoo. So a seventh uh, differentiator that I want to mention, and this was important to me because it came into play with my EnviroGroom products when I made the decision uh, to use these guys as some of my main players in my salons, um, is the company value. So EnviroGroom in particular has a very low carbon footprint. Uh, they're very concerned about the environment, making sure that everything is biodegradable. So that company value coincided very much into my belief system. So with all of those checkboxes, that we talked about or checked for Envirogroom on the way, their company values really uh, made the final differentiator to me. Um, so I just want you guys to be aware that uh, in terms of the companies and the brands that you can be selecting, looking at their core values uh, may help you make a decision. All right, and before we close, let's talk about conditioners. Um, again, very important, but I will tell you this, is that I don't use a cream rinse for every single one of my clients. In fact, it's pretty rare. Usually a dog has to be matted for me to actually do a shampoo and then rinse that off and then do a cream rinse, let it sit for 10 minutes or whatever it is, and then rinse that off. That's very, very rare. Um, in rare situations, what I do is I use either a leave-on conditioner, right, or I use a spray conditioner. So this is a concentrated, the stuff. Uh, this is a hypoallergenic uh, conditioning agent that I spray on the dog's coat when they're damp, or I use uh, Zymox leave-on conditioner and work it into their coat. That is because of just the sheer numbers of dogs that come through a professional environment doing a cream rinse. I just don't have the time, um, nor do I have better effect, honestly, with a cream rinse for most dogs. I can go ahead and use a leave-on or a spray-on conditioner and get the effect of sealing in that cuticle, sealing in that skin, and providing that moisture. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed our discussion on choosing shampoo like a pro. Um, now, I can't tell you, again, which ones to choose. Hopefully, I gave you a little bit of insight into directions and views that you can look at uh, when using shampoo and when choosing shampoo so that it fits your criteria, what your requirements are, and fits the needs of your clients. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for clicking that thumbs up if this is content that you like. Uh, thank you for subscribing, and we really appreciate your time. We will see you soon.